It was one of the more complicated things that we've done as a, as a pet cemetery, uh, um, getting David's body transported from Hong Kong to Manchester and then having his funeral here. My name's Jason Ward. I'm the general manager of pet funeral services here at the pet cemetery in beautiful North Wales. I've been working here for around about 26 years. Uh, I started out as a driver and helping out around the grounds. And these days I generally just manage the day-to-day -day running of the business. I've started working with, with my mum and dad. In recent years, my brother Dirk and my sister Emma also help out. And now, um, recently as well, my, uh, my own daughter and son both work here at the cemetery too. It often surprises me about such a, what a broad demographic of people use our services. There isn't a common theme. Often people would think that you know, pet cemeteries are, or, or pet cremation is something that's done by little old ladies with a blue rinse and their poodle. But the truth is, we're, in this country we're a, we're a, we are animal lovers and we have a lot of pets and we are you know, we're dedicated to our pets and, uh, and they're part of our family. So every kind of person or every person has the potential to want to use our services. And generally it's that they've, um, they have a relationship with their pets. They're, the animals are not a lifestyle accessory. They're not a tool for a job. They're a contributive member of their family unit. Um, or even if it's just the person and their pet. Everything that you can imagine as a pet, sort of from snakes and lizards um, and to small creatures like guinea pigs and hamsters, pigs, birds as well, you know, people don't often understand how long you can have some birds for. Budgies and parakeets live to 14, 15, sometimes 20 years. It's a long time to have a relationship with a, with a personality. Um, so the, you know, as that relationship builds, it becomes more and more difficult to just discount it when, when it's all over. And you, know, you feel the need to have some kind of uh, funeral rite or certainly to make sure that they're treated with, a, with, with some dignity when the end comes. We started receiving inquiries many years ago uh, uh, for people to have their remains interred here. Uh, the first chap, Ted, is over in the columbarium. Uh, his wife came to us after he passed away and said that she had his ashes and um, she knew that he wanted to be laid to rest with the ashes of his dog, Bess. And Bess was still alive and, and, and this was the lady's quandary. Uh, if, if Bess had passed away before Ted, their intention was to have Bess cremated and then she could have put Bess's ashes in with Ted so that when Ted was cremated, their remains were together. So she approached us and asked if we would inter Ted's ashes here and then to be followed by, uh, by Bess's ashes when the time came. We were deeply honoured that somebody would choose to have their remains here. And uh, we had a little service for Ted and he was interred and a few years later, Bess did pass away and, and her ashes came up. He was survived by his wife um, for much longer, maybe 10 or 15 years, uh, but she passed away about eight or nine years ago now and her remains are over with Ted and Bess in the columbarium. And they were the first people to come here. But since then, we've had many, many people who consider that you know, the, the family that they have um, it is their pets, you know, they are their immediate family. The, the serenity and beauty of the cemetery has made them consider that, know that they'd like to be here as well. And we now have uh, the ashes of around about 50 or 60 humans here, interred with the ashes of their pets. This cemetery is different from most cemeteries, not just because we have animals, but because of the, the life that's here and the, and the people that are here, it's a place where often people have been sad, but it's not a sad place. As a day-to-day -day job, sadness is not part of what we do. We're, we're empathic and we like to support people, but the important part is that our, we're not grieving ourselves. We understand people's grief, but 
you know, it, it's rewarding and, and, and to be able to help people through those things and, and to give them um, permission to be upset without actually getting upset ourselves. So no, I, I don't consider that the cemetery is, you know, that it, it's a sad place to work. Um, we're actually quite a jovial bunch. Um, we like to, we like to have a, you know, a good laugh in work, the same as everybody else, without being irreverent or, or without it sort of being disrespectful. You know, we're always mindful of, to be respectful of, of where we are, but at the same time, uh, you know, we, we like to, to, to keep, to make sure that we are, you know, we're light about these things. I, I never even considered for a second about, about it being scary. Um, having lived here for so long and been here, you know, when it's been dark and, and, and you know, even when it's, it's spookily or, you, know, you know, eerily quiet or there's a fog and, and all those kind of things. This is my home uh, and I've always felt at home. So it, to me, it's a place of sanctuary and a, a place of safety and wouldn't consider it for one second for it to be scary. Personally, I have never seen a ghost. I've never had the feeling of, a, of an, a, an unearthly presence or a presence in any way uh, uh, when I've been here. But that said, if I did, then there is so much love and joy installed here at the cemetery that I can't imagine there being a malevolent spirit. And certainly all of the animals that are, that are laid to rest here have been deeply cherished by the, the people who, whose family they were. For every single being that's here, I'd be more than happy to bump into them on a dark night and wouldn't be frightened at all. Um, so I don't, I don't see it. This, the cemetery is, is a place of positivity and a celebration of life. And uh, so I don't see it as ever being scary, not to me anyway. The human aspect of what we do can be quite difficult. When you have a, um, a human being in front of you who is so obviously deeply distressed and incredibly sad about what's going on, it's, it's almost impossible to not at least feel something. Uh, and it's part of being an empathic and, you know, and, and part of sort of you know, helping you to understand how people are feeling. Um, and, and that, I would say, is the only sad part of what we do. Some of the most technically difficult things that we have to do are to do with moving large pets from awkward positions. Um, we've, you know, we, as you know, we provide funerals for horses, um, uh, and one of the things about horses is they can go down in a field or in a stable or, or somewhere, and, and they can't get up. And, and for whatever illness is meant that they can't get up they're put to sleep exactly where they are and it then falls to us to try and get them out of wherever they are and again to try and do it in with some sort of element of dignity um, and that can be very difficult you know and very challenging those things are just sort of technical challenges and and problems to solve um, dealing with with people's emotions is, is often a little bit more difficult it's really important to us that we treat everybody's pet in exactly the same way. You know, we don't care whether this, whether your dog won Crufts or whether it was a second-hand cat that you got off a building site. You know, you, the important thing is the relationship that you've had with them. But there have been, uh, over the years, a few, you know, a few very interesting situations. I mean, we have David, the Golden Retriever, buried here at the cemetery. And he lived in Hong Kong. Uh, he, his uh, his mum Elaine um, was devastated at his loss and did not want to have him cremated under any circumstances. Her personal beliefs were that you know for, for burial in Hong Kong um, there are very few places for even humans to be buried. Uh, the space is at such a premium, uh, so that it wasn't possible for her to do that. So she knew she'd have to spread uh, where she was looking and considered Australia and had a look there. And while she was looking on the internet, she came across our little pet cemetery over here in North Wales and decided that that was the place where she wanted David to lay to rest. It was one of the more complicated things that we've done as a, as a pet cemetery. Uh, um, 
getting David's body transported from Hong Kong to Manchester and then having his funeral here. We've done a cremation for a, for a Shire horse. He was 18 hands and weighed just under a ton. We did a cremation for a Marmoset. I mean, we've done a, budge, we've done a sparrow, which would probably be the lightest animal, but the smallest animal we did was a, was a Marmoset, a tiny little monkey. And he was, uh, I'm not sure how old he was, but he looked like a little old man. He had little gray whiskers and a wrinkled face. And, and it was, a, he was, he'd been around for, uh, it was a, a long time that, he, that he'd survived. And I can remember the chap who came, said, you know, he would, he'd, he'd always, seemed to have always been around, you know, when he, from when he was a small boy and almost like the little brother he never had. The oldest animal we've ever done has been a parrot. He was an African grey parrot and he was nearly 80 years old. But that's not really unusual uh, for, for birds and stuff like that. The oldest dog that we, we've had is sort of what that, you know, you can, they had a specific date for was we, we had a 26 year old Jack Russell and we've had a 24 year old cat uh, as well. Working at the cemetery is a really rewarding job. We are helping people with things that they can't often do for themselves. So it's nice to be in a position to do that. Um, we have a lot of experience with the emotions that people feel and helping them again to sort of, uh, sort of rationalise the way that they're feeling uh, is, is, is a reward in itself. The cemetery is a, a we try to make it as positive an experience visit in the cemetery as possible and always welcome visitors and, and uh, you know, we're happy to have people come and have a look round or come and chat to us and, and ask us about the different things that we do.